So moving away from that first set, let's look at the, uh, the ways that we're trying to prevent the immune system from expanding to bring in more immune cells. Well, we have what's called an inflammatory cascade. When you get some type of attack in your bowel from maybe something you ate or um, some infection that you caught, the infection or the thing you ate is called the antigen, and that's highlighted on the left side. And that antigen then starts the immune system off, it, it recognizes it, and it says, hey, this ain't supposed to be here, and you have a whole inflammatory cascade of immune cells and releasing of all these different proteins to bring in more immune cells, ultimately at the end, to destroy the invader. And we think the problem in Crohn's and colitis is that while you're trying to destroy an invader that may not even be an invader, and your bowels are in the way and getting destroyed, uh, that's why you get the ulcers and the fistulas and sometimes surgery. So many of you who have Crohn's and colitis will be familiar with the medicines that we've used to looking at this cascade. For example, many of the old medicines waited till the damage happened and then tried to clean up the leukotrienes, the superoxides, the prostaglandins, these are medicines you see named here. I put brand names because it's, patients will, will know them, azacol, pentazol, colazol, geazol, lealda, propriso, dipentum, azulfidine, rowasa, and canassa. And yes, I will challenge you to read those faster than me. Other um, similar uh, approaches for a different class of medicines, kind of the same areas, are the dreaded prednisone, hydrocortisone, budesonide, Medrol, Entercort, Eucerus. Again, these have been focused on cleaning up the inflammation or preventing further inflammation way down after it's all started. But we've been trying to move up sooner in that cascade to prevent the damage from even happening. You may be um, familiar with Imuran, Purinothol, meth Methotrexate, which directly impact the white blood cells, preventing them from making all those inflammatory proteins, actually killing them or, or really knocking down their, their um, activity. I highlighted um, TNF and then the Greek letter alpha, tumor necrosis factor alpha. Look how high up in the cascade. All the arrows seem to lead from there. And what the biggest breakthroughs in not just Crohn's and colitis, but rheumatoid arthritis and psoriasis and spondylitis has been blocking TNF-alpha, very effective in nearly completing shutting off the, act, the active inflammation. In Crohn's and colitis, we have Remicade, Humira, Simsia, and Symphony. You may have heard of those. That's how they work, and that's why they work so well. Well, some of these actually kill the troublemaker immune cells. Some of these medicines, if you see an immune cell, which is the big blue thing, the little, the little uh, kind of antennae on the bottom are receptors, the antibody for the drug, such as the Remicade or the Humira or uh, the Symphony, attach to the cell and then kill it. Now, your body makes new cells, and that's why you have to get future doses. You can't just get one dose. But these medicines not only were in the last slide, but are also in this slide, another way of trying to uh, work. Now, this is 2015. And for the past year now, we've had a very exciting new uh, product that selectively impacts the gut uh, immune system only. So I already showed you this cascade. Look at that bottom part. It says inflammatory cell adhesion. We actually have medicines, one called Tysabri, one called Antivio, that selectively do this. Tysabri is for the uh, nervous system and for the gut, and Antivio is just for the gut. 